Welcome, you're watching Press TV's news review program where we discuss one of our top stories with our guests. The United Nations denounces the Israeli regime for its plan to evict Palestinian families from their ancestral homes in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of occupied Al Quds. Stefan de Jerich, spokesman for UN Secretary General, slammed the move as a violation of international law. He said the UN has repeatedly called for an end to the forced eviction and demolition of homes in the occupied West Bank and Al Quds. The UN official called on Tel Aviv to adopt necessary measures to protect civilians, including Palestinian refugees. He made the comments after a UN delegation visited the occupied Palestinian territories. Sheikh Jarrah has been a flashpoint, witnessing crackdowns by Israeli forces on the Palestinians protesting against the expulsion of dozens of families in favor of Israeli settlers. Well, to discuss this story further, we have Tim Anderson, the director for the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies on the line from Sydney, and Jaffa Ramini, a Palestinian writer and political analyst from Perth. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us. Let me start with uh, Jaffa Ramini. You are a Palestinian exile. You lived it. You have first and experience about this. Is this, is what happening in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood clear evidence of ethnic cleansing carried out by the apartheid Israeli regime? Oh, well, of course it is. I mean, it's, it, this has been the message from the Zionist movement from the inception of the idea of turning Palestine into a national home for the Jews. There have been many a massacre uh, that was committed in 1947-48 to ethnically cleanse many a town and villages in, in, in Palestine. I'm from the north of Palestine, I'm from Jenin. And I was five years old when, when, when the war happened. Uh, and I saw with my own eyes what the Haganah and the Ergun did. Uh, and we, the Israeli historians and, and archivists have recently unearthed the, the massacre of Tantura, which is a village near Haifa. It was totally the, the ethnically cleansed and buried. There is, there is a car park on top of it now. And this has been happening for a while. And we have, I have many examples that I can use here to show the ethnic cleansing, the intent of the Israeli government, the continuous Israeli governments, who go out of their way to kill, maim, murder, and destroy. Yet the world is looking the other way. It's no good that the UN condemns or Australia says, no, no, you shouldn't do that. They've got to be an exerted effort to show the Israelis that we mean what we say. Mm -hmm. Don't condemn, do something. The UN, unfortunately, is toothless. And Israel knows for well that no matter what they do to us, they have the backing of most of govern Western governments in the world, especially the United States of America. And I'm sorry to say, my next adopted country, which is Australia. As you know, I moved here over a year ago after 53 years in London. And the situation for us Palestinians, unfortunately, is very dire. Nobody but nobody is in our corner. Thank you so much. Let me uh, cross over to Tim. Tim, welcome. Uh, why do you think the Zionist regime is trying to change the demographic character of the occupied territories? They're trying to create a fait accompli where they have uh, expelled, uh, effectively carried out a slow motion genocide to clean, in this case we're talking about a large section of East Jerusalem, but they have their eyes on the entirety of historic Palestine. And of course, international law is against them in many respects, but as your previous guest said, um, it's the problem is that uh, the states that are in a position to do something do nothing about it, despite the fact that we now have four reports. Um, 
identifying very clearly branding the zionist regime as an apartheid regime and therefore a crime against humanity, a regime that has to be dismantled in favour of a system which gives full citizenship rights to all people that live in historic Palestine. Uh, Tim, what is it about, uh, well according to figures there are 218 families, about 1,000 Palis individual Palestinians living in the Sheikh Jarrah neighbourhood. What is it about them that uh, scares the regime? It's, uh, they have their eyes on that as a means of, there's, a, there's an Israeli settlement above that um, in East Jerusalem already and they're carving out East Jerusalem slice by slice effectively trying to, as I said, it's a slow motion genocide effectively pushing people, trying to make them desperate, force them to leave. Um, people who have no security, in any case they have no citizenship rights, they can't claim the rights of a citizen, they are not equal human beings to the Jewish Israelis that live next door to them. And so this is happening, it's happening in the south of East Jerusalem in Silwan also. So it's something that's happening across occupied Palestine and has been for many decades now. Thank you so much, both of you. Uh, let's leave it at that, but stay with us. I'm going to go over some social media reactions uh, to this story and I will get back to you shortly. So um, let's take a look at some reactions. First one up, we have ethnic cleansing of Palestinians has to stop. We all need to stand by the Solemn family and the rest of the Sheikh Jarrah members facing the same threat. Next, dozens of Israeli soldiers attacking a resident of Sheikh Jarrah who's peacefully holding the Palestinian flag. I just don't understand what triggers them the most. Is it the flag or the concept that will remain in our lands no matter what they do? Moving on to the next comment, apartheid Israel's or Israel's ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians in Jerusalem, forced displacement and transfer of civilians into occupied territory is a war crime. Save Sheikh Jarrah, free Palestine, Israeli settler police violence before Sheikh Jarrah expulsion. Next, there is need for a UN peace force to deal with these atrocities. And finally, Israel is literally a bully nation. They hunted down Arab Israelis last year during the whole Sheikh Jarrah outrage. Over 1,000 Arab Israelis were arrested for their support of the Palestinian residents. Well, those were some comments that uh, we we're getting on the internet. Gentlemen, let's resume our discussion. Uh, let me go over um, to Mr. Ramini. Uh, wh why there is this lack of serious will to stop the apartheid Israeli regime? Well, historically, there's two, two good reasons. No number one is the, what happened to the Jews in Germany <clears throat> in the 1930s. Nothing to do with us, but we are paying the price. We are paying the price of Western government's guilt for allowing this to happen and looking the other day, the other way. And now they're allowing genocide to happen in Palestine. To us, the Palestinians, not only they're looking the other way, but they are aiding and abetting the perpetrators of those crimes. The, the, the second one is they convince themselves, I mean, Western governments, that they need a friendly regime in the Middle East to do their bidding. And they cannot be more wrong. The Israelis and the Zionists are doing their own bidding. They have a plan since the late 19th century to totally, but totally, absorb the entire landmass of Palestine with no Palestinians in it. They started by saying that there were no people in, in, in Palestine, Terra Nellis. And then they said, we are not from there. We are, we are interlopers. 
Uh, if they forgot that we are 10,000 years in Palestine called the Canaanites. And some of us must, must have been Jews and then Christians and now for the last 1400 years Muslims. This is their plan. They want to take all of Palestine and if anybody in the West, a politician I mean, dares to, to raise his or her head above the parapet and say this is not fair, this is illegal, this shouldn't be done, that's the end of their political career. And let's talk about other places in, in, in Palestine which this is happening. Not only East Jerusalem and Sheikh Jarrah, they have obliterated Al Magariba gates towards Al Aqsa Mosque. Nobody talk about that. Mm. There is a village called Al Araqib in Nakab. They have demolished 187 times. There are many incidents in the Jordan Valley where the soldiers and the settlers attack and evict families destroy their water resources and call it their own. Netanyahu said they will never, he will never abandon the, the, the Jordan Valley. And there is Jericho. Jericho is dying because the settlements that surround Jericho are stealing, and the world is stealing, all the waters around Jericho, and Jericho is dying. Right. This is what they do. And they do it nowadays in full glare of the cameras. Because as I said at the beginning, they know no matter what, the United States of America will have their back, as they say. Thank you. The more glaring evidence of this is the visit by Mrs. Nancy Pelosi last week to Israel despite what was going in Sheikh Jarrah and in the Nakab and in the Jordan right. Valley. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Tim, in like 30 seconds if you can, do you think that uh, the statements issued by the UN is a step in the right direction and whether that step is enough? Uh, of course it's not enough. It's a restatement of international law. But as uh, other guests said, the uh, process in Palestine is precisely linked to the, the wars on Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Yemen. And so it's a forward base, as well as a Zionist colony, it's a forward base for the big power to try and control the region with all of the wars it's launched in recent decades. I appreciate your time, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining this edition of News Review. I've been talking to Tim Anderson, the director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us from Sydney, and Jaffa Ramini, a Palestinian writer and political analyst, joining us from Perth. Thank you for watching this edition of News Review.